Hey, it's Wendy Jensen here, and I wanted to share a really quick and casual vi video with you about how to release the contempt against the church. So when we go through a faith crisis and everything starts to unravel and we start to um, kind of unload and unpack um, the religion that we've been, uh, that our life has been built on and our foundation has been built on, um, there's some things that we discover that we feel a lot of betrayal, a lot of um, regret, resentment, um, and remorse even. There's a lot of emotional baggage that comes with faith crisis and it can be directed towards the church because we want someone to take responsibility for how we're feeling. And so um, we develop this contempt against the church and we get angry. And it's, it's not that your anger is not justified, it's that if you continue to have that contempt, um, you remain bonded to the church in a very toxic way. And it pulls you down and you cannot move forward. And that's what all of us want to do is we want to be able to move move forward and move on and, and get on with our lives. So I came up with these six or seven. <laughs> I came up with a, a, a seventh one recently about how to, just some tips about how to release this contempt. And so I wanted to share those with you. I also would like to introduce you to my book. I'll leave the link below. And it's called um, A Peculiar Transition. You can also my website and my email address is below if you want, ever want to get a hold of me. So, number one tip is to admit that something wrong happened. And we have to own our humanity and uh, honor that we've discovered that you've been psychically hooked to a fixed fantasy. And that, that fantasy may be playing out in your life still with your family and with your fl friends. In fact, you might be the only one in your sphere of influence that is kind of breaking out of that fixed fantasy. And so it feels like isolation. It feels like abandonment. A acknowledge that it feels like a shock to your system and it feels like a, be a betrayal of your trust and um, a betrayal of your resources and of your mind. And what's happened to you is it's not right. It's not okay for us to treat each other um, with, without integrity or without honesty or without um, the qualities and the values that we've been taught when we, were, when we were inside the doctrine and we were young and we were learning good principles. So it's not right what happened to you. And it's still happening. But you know what? It happened. And so we have to come to grips with it. We don't pretend like it didn't happen. We don't dismiss it. It is a big deal. Your faith crisis and your faith transition is a huge deal. It's a big, big deal. And it's okay to admit that and acknowledge it. The second thing, number two, is to identify the emotions that are coming up for you, all the emotions that are associated um, with this faith crisis, anger, betrayal, helplessness, isolation, abandonment. These are some of the things that come up for, for so many of my clients. So the emotions are there to put your mind in motion. So when we were under the influence of the indoctrination, our mind was not, at least it was not an emotion um, in the motion that it needed to be. It was rather stagnant. It was time for your soul to move on. And so these emotions are not to be ignored, but you can't spin around in them. Uh, um, you have to go through them and acknowledge where are those emotions trying to move me. So for example, where do they want to take me? They want to take you to higher ground. They want to take you to a higher plane of thinking and functioning. Those emotions... Um, where I help you realize that wherever you were was not that your soul needed to move on. So your emotions are taking you to more honesty, to a higher level of self-awareness. Those emotions are designed to bring you into higher levels of love and acceptance and more authenticity. And if you reflect upon your faith crisis, that's exactly where it's taking you. So ride the wave of emotions. Uh, realize that that anger is coming up and that betrayal is coming up because something was broken and you now are choosing to live your life um, with more definite 
integrity and authenticity to yourself. This whole faith crisis is about you learning to acknowledge and accept yourself. The third thing to do is to consider forgiveness. When I say this, there are so many people on different stages of faith transition that it can be very difficult for you to hear me to say, um, consider forgiveness. But part of the contempt that we feel is because we're hoping that somebody's going to come and take responsibility um, for what's happened to us. We want them to admit what they've done. Um, that forgiveness is letting go of needing them to be responsible for your emotions. Taking back your power to, and by releasing them. So let me explain this again. You're taking back your power by releasing them from having so much control over your emotions, over your emotional state. We can't, we can't base our inner stability on the foundation of a faulty, faulty church anymore. And that's what this faith crisis is calling you to. Higher um, awareness, a higher plane of living and understanding the world. And so we've got to claim full responsibility of our emotional state in order for us to turn to a true inner stability. So forgiveness is that key. The number four one is reframing what has happened to you or changing the meaning of what's happened to you. When we change the meaning of what's happening to us, we're no longer so emotionally engaged in it. So let me give you an example of what I mean by this. Um, instead of being feeling like you've been lied to and manipulated and shunned, step about a thousand feet away from that and from that story that we tell ourselves, and maybe it looks more like this. We've all been raised, every one of us on the planet have been raised or are being raised in a fixed fantasy situation. So for some of us, right before we awoke, um, we realize what it was. It's either a, a family paradigm, or it's an abusive paradigm, or it's a religious paradigm, or it's a crazy accident paradigm, but whatever happened, we had life before that happened, and then life after. It's such an epic moment that we are going to be two different people after that crisis in time. And some of us have more than one, one crisis, but faith crisis, it, it's a big one. It's a huge one, especially for people in authoritarian fundamental religions. So. If you step back, you realize we're all going through this at some level and consider that you being living under the trance of the indoctrination, you learn so many valuable and wonderful things. Um, values that were in that experience, you can take into the next life. That, into the next life. <laughs> I said it again, sorry. So shifting out has been the best Thing that could happen to you but it's also the hardest and it's difficult and it's meant to be difficult um, so let me explain a little bit about the values you're learning before the faith crisis you learned about community you learned about service you learned about discipline you learned about the value of family you learned about honesty and and, and you learned about um, all the things that we learn in church to live in alignment with the principles of Jesus Christ. That is so good. But then when we have a faith crisis, that crisis is calling us to an even higher level of those things. And so what we're learning in the transition, the, 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 the muck of it and the mess of it before we're fully living in this second life is you are now learning deeper self-acceptance. You're, le you're learning um, deeper and higher, I should say, integrity. You're learning how to come from a place of true authenticity and you're recognizing that you were kind of living in a facade and you're a little bit more aware of how the rest of the world thinks and you're never gonna be able to, to, to go back to the old way of thinking. Also, you're learning self-trust. You're learning how to create boundaries. You are learning some of the most difficult human functions available and you're learning it all through this faith crisis this is school that we're going through and it's 
it's hard. It's hard stuff, and sometimes um, faith crisis is one of the best places to learn those things. And so if you can reframe it and say, okay, I'm, I'm going through my hard school, yay me, and I'm going to get through it. So long as I'm processing these emotions and I'm taking accountability for the way I feel and I'm letting the church off the hook from needing to be accountable for what they've done and it's just going to continue. Those There's people that are at that stage of development that need it still and I allow them to be wherever they're at but I need to move on and that's going to be the next um, the next three steps that I'm going to share here. So number five is to claim your identity and take back your authority. And you can do that by telling yourself, I am the sovereign authority in my life. I'm free to think and study and explore and believe as I choose without the fear of shame or spiritual punishment. It's been said that true free agency is the ability to make a choice without fear. And so we're now at that place. And Tell yourself, I don't have to answer to anyone from here on out. I'm free to think and act and feel as I wish without the continual hum of anxiety that I felt when I was a member. You cannot fully celebrate your freedom that's being offered to you right now. These wings that are being built on your back, you cannot truly enjoy them until you've lost that contempt for the church. That contempt is going to weight you down so those wings can flap all they want. But if you've got that contempt still going down, you're not going to get anywhere fast. And so the faster we can release this contempt, the better. And that's what I want for you. The next um, step is number six, and that is be the guardian of your thoughts and your environment. So if you're listening to a, po a podcast and you start to notice that you're building some of that contempt again, you're going to need to wash, rinse, and repeat with all the steps that I just shared with you. And maybe you'll get good and fast at it. I know it took me a long time because I want to hear, I want to listen, I want to get to the grit of what's really going on. I want to understand it. But I realized that as I listened to so many podcasts, I would go into the state of contempt and anger again as if I had just learned again that the church is not true. <laughs> so you have to be the guardian of your thoughts and your emotions and your and your environment. Watch what you're what you're listening to, and if it troubles you and it's bringing you down, um, honor that you need to step away, turn it off, change directions because it's just bonding you back into the trauma. It's like trauma. You're, you're rebonding with the crisis and you're rebonding with the contempt that you have towards the church. And so I know this is a difficult thing because we can get really addicted to those podcasts because they're validating the wound in us. Um, but we don't want to always be in recovery. We want to move on. We want to have a happy life. So number seven is to face forward. I always think about this, just face forward and just put not blinders on, but blinders to all the chaos that's happening within the church, not within the world. Um, so put your face forward. Don't look back. Be present and plan your shame-free future. It's, it's exciting where you're at now in your life. Be grateful that you're expanding, that you're growing, and that you're no longer bound to the expectations and all of the obligations that the church had burdened you with. Find new, positive, healthy friends and um, creative, find a creative outlet for your extra available time and all your extra available resources and all your extra available mind space. You don't have extra available mind space if you're filling it full of contempt. Um, so as I said, those are my, my seven tips I wanted to share with you. This is a hard journey. And I, even though I share those seven tips, I don't expect it to be easy. There are skills that we are growing and developing that we could not if we had stayed within um, within the box of the church. You're moving on. You're growing. You're expanding. You're increasing your ability to love. And if you still have that, that tight part in your chest that's contempt against the church or even people who are who keep preaching to you, 
there's still a little bit of working to go through until they've totally been free and set free from um, from your uh, anger and all your emotions that you are being the master of all of that. So that's why I wanted to share with you today and I hope that this helps you. If Again, if you want to uh, go to my book, you can Get the link below and get a peculiar transition healing the trauma of Mormonism and you can also get a hold of me and if you're really struggling in your life right now to move on and to heal those family relationships and to be able to understand and connect with yourself spiritually intuitively and find your path that's unique to you please don't hesitate to get a get a hold of me I would love to help you through it take care bye